What is going on guys, Noah Brewer here back again with another video and today I'm gonna to be showing you the two different ad strategies that we use with ABO and CBO for testing products and how we're able to find hella winning products every single week um, using these exact methods. So I'm sharing my screen in an ad account, let's waste no time and get right into it. So essentially I'll give you a bit of an overview um, for the ABO method, what we're gonna do is seven ad sets at $5 per day and for the CBO method, what we're gonna do is a campaign at $35 per day in spending um, with seven ad sets below it. Now, I'm not gonna be talking about the actual ad itself, you know, in terms of the video and the ad copy. If you wanna see a video that I made on those subjects, um, go to my channel. I just put a video up, I believe like a month ago, talking about how to make a high converting ad and write high converting ad copy. This video is strictly gonna be about campaign creation and you know how to structure it just to make sure that you structure everything properly. So before we get into it, I would like to say that if you have my ebook, this video will go very good along with the ebook because um, in the ebook I talk about this method. Um, so not only will you be able to read about it, but you will also be able to see me do it live here with a real ad account. So if you don't have the ebook, I'll put the link in the description just so that you can go and download it. Uh, but let's get right into this uh, campaign creation now. So let's start with the ABO uh, strategy here. So essentially you click create and then optimize for conversions, of course. Um, in terms of naming the campaign, I like to keep things simple. For the campaign name, just name it the product name, whatever, whatever you're calling your product. For the ad set, we're gonna name it the interest that we're targeting and then the ad, we're literally just gonna call ad or you can call it whatever you want. I've never focused on you know, the name of the ad itself. So this is your campaign level. What you're gonna wanna do is go ahead and click next. So here you're gonna see basically a breakdown of all the different settings that you can have on an ad account. And we're just gonna go down and I'll show you how to modify each setting uh, for the best performance um, out of what I've seen so far. So if you haven't gone into your Facebook business manager and set up your events yet, you're gonna need to do that because if you haven't done that yet, then you're actually not gonna be able to optimize for purchase. This is because of you know iOS 14 and the new conversions API that Facebook is using to optimize for purchases and actually track data. So once you have that set up, um, come in here and just click purchase. So we're gonna optimize for purchases, for website purchases. Um, you can see different options like dynamic creative offer. We're just gonna leave those blank. Um, and we're gonna go ahead and set the budget to $5 a day. If you do have a bit of a bigger budget, yes, you can do $20 per day as well. Or if you have you know, a $200 product that you're trying to test and you have the budget and you're trying to see results quicker, then of course you can test with $5 or 20. Um, you can also do anything in between, but just keep in mind that all my experiences have been with $5 and 20 and I've tested all the other budget levels. And while they do work, in my experience, five and 20 are the ones that work the best. So in terms of the start date, I would definitely recommend um, scheduling it for um, whatever date that you are starting. So do it for tomorrow at 12 a.m. And you know, this doesn't really matter performance wise, um, but it does matter in terms of like the way that the ad account will start spending. Um, so for example, if you published in, if you publish your campaign at 6 p.m. Um, and you don't schedule it, it could very well try to spend your entire budget within those six hours. Um, or you know, it could wait a couple hours to get approved and then try to spend your full budget in two hours. And just to avoid wasting money um, and going through that, I usually just schedule it. Like I said, it doesn't affect performance that much, but I do recommend doing it just so that you know you can get a full day of testing on your first day. So from here, we're just gonna scroll down. You don't wanna set an end date. Um, you wanna run the ads all the time. So these are the. this is where you uh, target the locations. We're gonna come back to that in a minute because um, I actually have a list for you to exclude, which I'll put in the product description so that you can just so you can just copy and paste it for your own store. So down here, like, like I just did, I don't know if you caught it, but I unselected the, uh, the detailed targeting expansion um, option right here. The reason I do that is because when I'm testing different ad sets, I want each ad set to be different in its own way. Um, now, this is another thing that doesn't really affect performance that much, but it's something that I've always done. Um, and you know me, I like to stick to what works. Um, I have tested, you know, leaving this on, and honestly, I don't see that big of a difference in performance. You know, it's not any better, it's not any worse, so it doesn't matter that much, but you know, I just do it out of habit because it's what works for us. So down here on placements, you're gonna wanna click manual placements. Um, and you know, you can also do automatic placements. 
um, which we're kind of gearing towards a little bit more nowadays. Um, we've been doing a lot of split testing with automatic placements and manual placements with our clients with the agency. And honestly, same thing, there's not that big of a performance, but we are seeing a bit of a better performance from the automatic placements, which I think is really, really interesting. But for the sake of this video, I'm gonna show you how to do manual or how I do manual placements at least because if you choose to do automatic, you don't really know, need to know how to do it. You just select automatic. So I'm just gonna go ahead and un unselect these things. Um, there's a bunch of different options in here that you can go in and split test for yourself. Um, in terms of you know actually drop shipping and, and the stores that I've seen myself, I haven't really seen any of you know stories or anything like that make a huge difference with uh, cold traffic targeting. Um, with retargeting, however, um, it's really, really good to target all these different platforms and different placements um, just so that you can be kind of omnipresent um, and follow your customers around wherever they go on the internet. So keep that in mind that, you know, while on cold traffic, I target Facebook newsfeed and Instagram feed on retargeting, I may do automatic placements or I may do, you know, one targeting ad set only targeting Instagram Explorer or um, the Facebook marketplace, you know, just to see how those platforms perform with retargeting. So down here, we're not going to mess around with any uh, manual bidding or cost controls. Um, we're just going to leave it as it is um, and not really worry about it that much. All right, so once you have all of that set up, we have two more things that we need to do. Um, go into the audience targeting and just type in worldwide. Um, I highly recommend doing worldwide targeting as opposed to, you know, big four or all tier one countries, um, just because this is what I've seen the most success with. And honestly, when I converted from doing big four or big five targeting into doing worldwide, my results just skyrocketed. Um, and we also just found a supplier that can get under 15 day shipping to pretty much any country in the world. So, you know, Get yourself a good agent if you are doing worldwide targeting, I would highly recommend it. But what we are going to do is we're gonna exclude a list of a bunch of other countries that um, we don't really wanna target. And there's numerous different reasons. Honestly, it depends on the country itself as to why we're not targeting them. But go ahead and paste your list um, right here. So, so hold this, paste, and you'll get this little pop-up location type. We're gonna do countries. You can see the list here, which like I just said, I'll put in the description um, just so that you guys can go ahead and copy it for yourself and use it for your own ads if you wish. So we're just gonna add those locations and you know, just to make sure because Africa is a continent and not a country, we're just gonna exclude Africa there because um, it probably picks it up as South Africa. Um, in terms of locations, I know in the last video I did, uh, some people had questions about what you should do with this. Um, as long as you're not doing um, travel in this location, either people living in or recently in or, you know, any, any of that stuff doesn't really matter, to be honest. I just leave it the way it is um, by default. So there's one more thing that you have to do, and that is choose an interest. So we don't have a product here to use as an example. So I'm just going to choose one niche. Um, let's just go ahead and click suggestions and let's just type in sports. Well, you know, like let's say we're selling a, a product in the bicycle niche. So, you know, if we're selling a product in the bicycle niche, I'm just gonna look up bicycle. And, you know, in terms of choosing interests, I like to keep things like as common sense as possible. If you're trying to sell a bathing suit, you're gonna wanna try to target bathing suit, at least, you know, attempt to do it. So yeah, see like right here, there's an interest called swimsuit. So usually if you search up, you know, whatever product that you're selling, try to get as close to the actual product as you possibly can um, first. And then from there, um, you'll be able to click suggestions. And here we go. We have a bunch of really good, um, you know, bicycle niche interests that we can target. So from here, um, we have all the basic things set up. We have the, uh, the, the conversion set up. We have the budget. We have it scheduled. Um, we have the uh, location targeting set up. We have the interest set up, we have the placement set up. We're just gonna exit out of this, and what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna duplicate this six times, because um, remember we do seven ad sets in total at five bucks a day, which I mentioned a little bit earlier, um, original campaign. And after we have those duplicated, all that we're gonna do now is go in here and just choose a different interest for each ad set. So we're gonna go ahead and do cycling for this one cycling and then you can unselect one of them and then we'll scroll back down to the interest and we're just going to do this for all seven i'll be back in a minute all right so here we have all seven ad sets created and i actually forgot to uh name this original one here so let's just do that real quick 
All right, so we have the campaign pretty much all set up and ready to go. From this point, all that you would need to do is go down to the ad level um, and put in your actual advertisement, which we're not gonna be covering in this video, but like I said, go on my channel. I have a video about how to create high converting ad copies, so make sure to go check that one out. Um, so that was the basic setup for the ABO testing strategy. We have seven ad sets at five bucks a day, um, each ad set with its own interest. Now, really quickly, um, before I lose you here, I wanna show you how easy it is to convert to the CBO testing method. So what you're gonna wanna do is go to the campaign level um, and you're gonna set everything up the exact same way that I just showed you um, just now. Um, and we're only gonna go in and pretty much just change one thing. So we're gonna scroll down here and we're gonna turn on um, campaign budget optimization, and it should already be at defaulted uh, $35 per day. Um, so we should have seven ad sets here, and everything should be set up exactly the same when we go to the budget. Um, you can see that the budget is not showing, and that is because this is a CBO campaign, um, and we are still scheduled for midnight. So essentially, um, if you wanna do ABO, just follow the video up until you know I said that we were done with ABO, and then if you wanna do CBO, just follow this video entirely and just switch it to CBO at the end um, just to make sure that you do all the other steps properly. So the pros and cons between the CBO method and the ABO method, there's not really that many pros and cons. I would say the best part of the ABO method is I've had much, much, much more experience scaling with the ABO method than with the CBO method. Um, and I would say the biggest benefit of the CBO method is that when you do find a winning product and it's time for you to transition into scaling, it's a little bit easier and a little bit smoother to actually make that transition. Um, as opposed to switching from ABO into CBO to scale, um, you can just go straight from CBO into more CBOs. So it's a little bit smoother with scaling, but all in all, um, I'd probably recommend doing the ABO method, but I wanted to show both simply because we get results with both methods, um, and I want you to do some testing on your own. So yeah, I hope that this video was valuable to you. If it was, leave a like. If you have any questions or feedback you wanna leave, of course, leave a comment. I appreciate your feedback and your comments and your questions. And I'm sure that the other viewers as do as well, because um, they might have questions that are similar to your questions or they, they might wanna read your feedback. And it just kinda helps us all as a community. So as always, I really appreciate you watching. That is it for this video. I wanted to keep it pretty quick, but I'm Noah Brewer and I'm out. Peace.